Hey everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and today I'm going to show you how you yourself can paint step by step this gorgeous scene of a woman tranquilly floating in the ocean with roses in front of her face. I'm really excited about this painting because it's going to take something complicated, the human face, and make it super simple for beginners. On the mic is my husband, John. Hello. He is going to make sure that you guys at home can see exactly what's going on. We have many robotic cameras and we will switch angles and views. We'll zoom in where you need it. This right now is a live stream, but you might be watching on the replay. If you're here for the live, you can ask questions by putting your questions all in caps. Some of those questions might even be asked of me live on the show. If not from me, you'll hear those answers from the community or from the mods. We have people here who have done almost all 1500 paintings. So we've got some art Sherpa experts in the room, I'm sure to help you find any of our resources. Now, this is a beginner painting in that I'm gonna break it down. I'm gonna show you how to draw it in. I'm gonna break down the color mixes. I'm gonna break down the techniques, but you would wanna have a little bit of painting experience. You're not ready to go like completely solo. You're definitely following tutorials, but you understand core concepts like dry brushing, basic blending, basic color mixes. If you don't know any of those things yet, not to worry, I have a whole course for that to get you all the way caught up so you can do stuff like this, no problem. And it's free. The mods will drop a link to you guys. If anybody needs it, just put your little virtual hands up and we'll make sure you get a, a link to that free course, which is gonna take a year off your art journey if it takes off a day. How you doing today, John? Good. <clears throat> this is a nice weekend day, isn't it? It is. So let's begin this day with a deep breath. We've got steps today. We do. We're recording the overhead. We are. <sighs> that way you guys get the nice little one minute time lapse peek at this. Now I'm gonna be breaking down this lesson into steps. Those are little segments so that you guys kind of can replay it in micro bits. Those are also gonna be time stamped after the show. And on these live, live, live streams, we, after the video is over, write a mini book of step-by-step -step instructions that match this. So that if you're a multi-strata learner, you're gonna have those resources. They come about seven to 10 days after the show and they are also completely free. I'm gonna sip my drink. Oh, sipping. I'm sipping, I'm sipping. I'm like, uh, I'm like one of the Korean um, rom-coms. I'm, I'm not actually sponsored by Snapple. Wouldn't that be cool? But I'm sipping their drink. Well, hello, Snapple. I don't know. I don't know if the... Uh... Unintended brand splash. Yeah. Now, I have uh, the colors in the description below. And I'm going to be using materials. Remember, you can use different colors. You can use different brushes. You can use a different canvas. If you're painting smaller, 8x10 is a great size for this because it works well with the printout on the traceable. And uh, it's the same aspect ratio. So everything will line up the same on an 8x10. You ready to do step one, John? Oh, I haven't gone over the materials. I should go over the materials and then go step one. Yeah. First material, 16 by 20 surface, eight by 10 if you wanna go smaller. And they have the wish or intention that you have calm and healing spaces in your life. I think it's important to have calm and healing spaces. Over here on the wet palette, I have ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. I only have those colors out yet because I'm gonna do an acrylic ground on the first step. We'll get cups of water and assorted brushes. We're gonna be using obviously more than two colors today. Are you ready to give us a step, sir? I'm, I'm ready. Step one is gonna be painting step the whole surface, one. this gray blue color. Girls swimming, swimming in the, the ocean. ocean. Summer vibes, that. right? Now get a big brush. You want a big, big brush? I'm gonna grab this big brush. This is just a, oh, this is a one and a half inch, you know, just like the kind of style that you paint your house with. It's hog bristles. I am gonna pull my splatter guard down a little bit. <laughs> Because sometimes painting these acrylic grounds, as you can see on my splatter guard, is uh, splashy. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get a little bit wet, and I'm going to just mix these two together right now. Because I just want this gray background. So when you mix ultramarine blue and burnt sienna together, sometimes you get a gray blue. And you can see I just took equal amounts of them, and I'm going to get this brush a little bit wet. And I'm going to just do a very streaky, but fully covered, toned ground, which means... The background will have a color on it, not be white. It's oceany. Well, it's going to help create the oceany, and because it's a little bit grayed, it's neutral. And notice that I'm not even worrying about being neat and tidy this moment. Today is a ground day. Huh. We're getting grounded with the ground. How now, ground Sherpa? 
Sometimes I would do very neat and tidy grounds, but today it's a messy ground. You grounded it. Mm-hmm. I got to find more ground puns. Now, sometimes pre-painting your surface, um, these most of the canvases you buy today, uh, pre-packaged, are all gessoed and ready to paint. Like, they're all prepped. Now, it's, that looks watery. It is. Today is a little watery. Is that okay? Because it looks yeah, like it had you some know, runs. You know what? You've... You can mix up 30, 40% water to your um, acrylic paint. There are a lot of artists that are very confused that you cannot mix water into your regular heavy bodied acrylic paint. That won't cause that. Uh... It's not going to cause it to undermine. Oh. We're, we're redoing the understanding of underbinding anyways, and I'd have to use a lot more water for that to even come into play. It's very swishy. Yeah. So we're way beyond what we'd have to do to worry. But now we've given ourselves, you know, a color, a place to start from. Right now it's kind of a bluish gray. And that's a good place to start because now when I layer blues, which happen to be a little bit transparent, and yellow ochres and burnt siennas could be a little transparent on the skin tones, I'm going to have depth to the painting. And that's going to be wonderful for me oh. and for you guys. This is a trick that you guys can do at home. I'm going to go ahead and rinse this out. Everybody was just wowed by this. This was like, because we thought you were going one way, and then you zigged and like. What did I do different than we I, all expected? You know, from my perspective, uh -huh. you, you started just loading your brush up and painting, 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 painting. And I was like, okay, you're going to put sort of a thick coating of paint on there. And then the water came. And mm -hmm. it totally changed the direction. That so I got some comments uh, out there, more than one, about like you can't add water to acrylic paint. And sometimes I'll make decisions to show you guys that you can do stuff. Now, there's a wonderful article by Golden Iris Colors on their Just Paint blog about underbinding how much water you can add to acrylic paint. Turns out it's a lot more than we thought. You just may have to let it cure longer, right? And I'm painting professional paint, so I can add a lot more water. If you're a painting student paint, you want to add a little bit less because it's a little more water sensitive, right? So it's about your paint. However, we can do this kind of ground. We're going to dry it with a hair dryer, and then we're going to sketch over the top of it. Uh, dry with a hair dryer first? Yep. And take a deep breath. Take this moment to breathe deeply, because maybe you're like, oh, we're adding so much water. Now, notice this isn't watercolor. This is just a thin coat of acrylic paint. It's a glaze. We're way within the tolerances of acrylic, which is 20 to 30% water. That's really cool. I think that the step, the breath is very important here. The <sighs> Breathing deeply. And so, as we all breathe deep, <sighs> no heat, don't use heat. Heat is bad for the painting. But in this case, really, you just need lots of air. That's the most important thing. People joke her up about the heat, meat, the heat thing, which is a thing. You shouldn't use heat, but mostly thoroughly dry your surface. Um, so you, your next layer isn't super sticky. That's really the key here is that because you had a lot of water, it may take a little extra time to get in there and go whoosh, suck all that that uh, water into a vaporous form that can cause the polyuro thingies to do the stuff where they turn hard and stick to the surface. There's a chemical reaction there that I don't quite know how to explain. And we'll just say some science happens and then it sticks to the surface. Yay, science. Okay. All right. Do, 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 do. So this is thoroughly dry. Yes. And for it to bind, I do want it to be thoroughly dry. And remember, if you have student paints, you'll have different experiences with your paint. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and put out some more burnt sienna. Let's put out the colors. Let's put out burnt sienna. Oh, we got to give them a step first. Yeah, give them a step. I will. I was I'm putting say, out colors. It, it's not I'm going to put cheap. out a little bit of yellow ochre sometimes called yellow oxide whichever yours is it's about if it's natural or synthetic but they're really the same hue or color so for you guys at home it's not really that important i'm gonna put out a little bit of my phthalo blue i have here recapping because i don't take good care of my cap sometimes can be a bit of a challenge for me i'm going to add some quinacridone magenta there's that golden artist acrylics I was talking about. So they have a lot of resources for you guys, and they have a special blog called Just Paint. And if you've ever had an art question, chances are the answer is over there. 
about anything because they have chemists that just work on it all the time and they test. They're always testing ideas, right? That's how they were, that's how they were able to figure out exactly how much water you can add to acrylic paint before it completely fails because they ran a series of tests over a period of years. You and I, we're never going to test at that level, so we're going to take advantage of their knowledge. Science. Science it. All right, and I'll go over the colors again on the palette. And sometimes it can be hard to know one from the other, one blue from the other, and so knowing where they are in my palette can help you at home. Oh, I love that we're doing the still palettes now. It just makes everything so much easier. All right. I need to adjust the palette. You need to adjust? I think so. I'm gonna you're going you're gonna to adjust it and then gonna and bring it together. And I'm going to put some... Yeah, a white in the center, and I'll probably add some Mars black over to the side. That's my titanium white I'm putting out. I like to put out colors. It's a, uh, they're chillaxing. Yeah. Looking for my Mars black. This is Mars black. Any black you have will work. All right, so let's go over these colors. This is Mars black. This is thalo green. This is thalo blue. This is ultramarine blue, which we've already used. Burnt sienna, which we've used. Yellow ochre, sometimes called yellow oxide, phenacridone magenta, cad yellow medium, titanium white. That's pretty chill, right? It is. Ah, oh, now we know our colors. Let's kind of sketch in our face. <sighs> Scary. Now, if you don't like to draw, and it's perfectly okay if you don't like to draw, drawing is a skill that you can learn as you paint. Whether it's watercolor or acrylic, you can learn the drawing skill as you go. Painting and drawing are close siblings, but they're not the exact same thing. Um, so you can actually pick up one before you pick up the other. Though I do think drawing is fun to learn, and you can do it even if you think you can't. But I'm going to demonstrate how I would sketch this in for a painting freehand. You guys, if you want to use the traceable at home, you do that right now. I'm going to take one of my ungettable brushes. <laughs> this is a number eight Art Sherpa uh, cat's tongue. These just aren't available, I think, that many places anymore. Um, you could use a filbert or a round here. I just like this brush for sketching. It's a nice sketching brush. And I'm going to grab some white. And I'm going to lay out a couple of thoughts. Because there's no point in me painting a bunch of beautiful sky and water where I know I'm going to have face. So let's say here, down at the bottom, our face is over on this left half really starting at the halfway point and really the top of the hair begins at the halfway point, right? Four inches down from that is where we see the face. We're only seeing the eyes. So let's come up about four inches and we can even, we can even guesstimate what that is or we can use a tool called the T-square, which we're gonna be using a lot. Just say, all right, well, this is about four inches up. So if I come here and make a little line just to let myself know when Right? And then about an inch from the top is where the hair is going to end. I'm going to be mm, six inches over drawing the face. How nice is that, right? The whole face is going to stop around 10 inches, and that includes hair. Yeah, 10 inches is with the hair. And I'm just looking at this to figure out where I want to pull this out. give myself an eight inch down just to love my life you know what I'm saying yes we'll bring a little line up and towards the water's edge let's bring another little line up and towards the water's edge. I don't want the face to be too small. Now I know down here I've got roses and so I've got just the area of the eyes, right? So let's bring our scholar head around here. We know that some of her is coming down underneath here. We're aware of that, but we're not gonna draw that in. And you've got a traceable for folks? Oh, I have a traceable for folks. So if you're not here yet, man, don't. Don't stress on that, okay? Because that's what the traceable is for, and it's perfectly acceptable to use the traceable. If this is the top of her head, 
about here at the eight inch mark would be like the beginning of her forehead. Mm. Once I know where her forehead is, I can bisect the face down the middle. And come really in the middle of this for the eyes. Right? Above the water, top of the forehead. Where I know where the top of the forehead is, I can kind of sketch over and say, oh, I've got some, some hair off to the side. Right? You don't really see her ears that much, but they would be like right about here. And we're going to just loosely sketch where the hair is going to hold space. Because we know her hair holds space, doesn't it? And then we've got a big, beautiful bun up top. And we're going to, you know, just loosely sketch around. Yeah. So we know where everything is. That nice bun sits down here under her head. But it's fairly full. So when you draw in painting, you don't really draw in the same way that you draw with a pencil. When you draw in painting, what you do is you block out space and where objects are in relationship to each other because you're going to be covering whole areas over with a solid field of paint or base color. And so if you're drawing in details, that's really going to be taken away and put back and taken away and put back. Um, when you're using the traceable, you'll just want to hold those details that you feel like you might need, you know? Once I know where her nose is, then it's pretty easy for me to set the eyebrows in. I come in down that center line, I'm carving in, arcing the brow bone up. And because I have this line here, I know where to put my closed eyes. This is face math, face math, right? <laughs> I love face math. And see, then we've got a bunch of little roses here, don't we? Yeah. I don't got to worry about any of that. I really only have to paint a little bit of skin, closed eyes, and a lot of hair. And this looks good with very little. And this is what I mean. Now, if I wanted to finish out her face, like I would know, like, come down here, and there's a mouth here and a chin here, because I know my face math. Mm. And I have videos about that. Videos about how to quick draw on a face or the believe face. The face that helps you believe you can draw a face <laughs> because you don't believe you can right now because it seems so crazy and complicated and difficult until you realize that from the top of your head to the bottom of your chin at the halfway point is your nose and that the halfway point is your eyes and then between your nose and your chin is the mouth and everything's in the middle of the skull. If everything went okay mm -hmm. when you were being cooked in your mama's stomach. <laughs> Things are generally in relationship to that. That's all we're going to do at this stage. Oh, you know what else we might do? Give ourselves at the 8-inch uh, mark. Let's go back and mark our 8-inch mark. Some oceanic yeah, horizon. Yeah, we need to give some ourselves some oceanic horizon. It's got to be level. This it's got to be level. One. It can't be tilty. It uh, is best if your ocean isn't tipping and pouring out. And that's the other reason I like to use a T-square. See, the, the, if, if you're like me, mm. you will intentionally... Create the water horizon at a very slight angle. To tip your then, ocean out? And then hang the painting so that the horizon is straight. So that people will come along and automatically try to correct it and then put it back. <laughs> so, because you want to harass people. No, because I want to have inter engaging art. Now, this is great because everything above this line is sky and everything below this line is water. So it's just divided this canvas. And let ourselves know where things are. Look at us making whole landscapes here. You you did. You created a line. world. You did great, guys. You've got this. this the, now, again, freehanding, bit of a challenge. Traceable, not a challenge. <laughs> so that's why we like to have those levels of things. And that's a lot of times where we say, oh, this is for a beginner, but it's a two hoot. Two hoot, three hoot, or three hoot. Because if you're going to freehand, it's probably three hoot. If you're going to use the traceable, it's probably a two hoot. See how that kind of scale of difficulty works out for you guys. Mm -hmm. Do you need All to right. try this? Are we good? Um, I think we're good. We're good. I think we're going to just go on to the next step. We'll we're going to sip our drinks. Take a deep restorative breath. <sighs> Remember that we've done hundreds of things in our lives harder than this painting. Been braver in our lives. 
face more difficult challenges. This is just sky and ocean. This is coloring, and we've got this. You can do this. Now, I have some paintings coming up that are one hoot. One hoot paintings. If you haven't painted before, they'll be really good for you guys to just dip your toe in. And those are like, if you don't know blending or dry brushing or which side of the brush is on, we're going to be beginning there and get another little group of new designs for that. Mm. And that's going to be fun for everybody. Ready to Really yeah, I step, think so. We could step them. We could step them now. Go ahead and be stepped. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So on my horizon, I'm going to kind of exaggerate things for my reference. It's a wonderful thing that we get to do as an artist because I really want to show a bright sky that's very calm and serene and then a deep sea. To do that, I'm going to get a bright Let's get a big bright, but not too big of a bright. This is a number 24 Textura. It's a very professional brush. Guess what? what? This company makes brushes <laughs> too, and they are really quality and less expensive. Simply Simmons oh. in the extra firm uh, filaments, and they have them online and everywhere. Like you could use this little sucker right here. Number 30 Simply Simmons. You can find these more economically online. But this is a fantastic brush, and I do recommend it. I just don't know where you're at in your own personal life journey and what kind of budget you're on. Uh -huh. So I'm going to take a little bit of my ultramarine blue and my phthalo blue together and kind of come over here into my white. When you say uh, paint looser or tighter, can you uh, kind of give us a little... So when you paint tightly, what you're trying to do is techniques and mediums and methodologies that structurally represent your object well. In other words, if I'm painting like expressively and freely, I'm painting loosely. But if I'm painting super realistically, I might be painting tightly. Right? Impressionism versus realism. Now I'm adding a little blue and white, and I'm just coming across here. It's okay that I go a little over into her hair. In fact, I should because I'm going to be putting loose bits of hair back into her. I know where it is now, right? You know where it is now. Mm. You just need to know where it is. So I'm just going to come across. I am coming across in a horizontal method. As I go up, I might add more blue into my mix. And we're going to continue just to paint this darker as we go up. Like, so we're up here, it's almost thalo blue, just a little bit of titanium white. Now where this brush comes off the edge, that's where it flicks paint, and so that's why sometimes I keep my screen down. Oh. Our community is having a lot of fun out here today. What are you guys into today? Well, they were there. Well, they were just noticing this a very pretty potential mermaid. It is a very poten pretty potential Could mermaid. We don't know. We don't know. But what we do know is that she's having a very serene and calm day. Blending down into my lighter sky. All right. So what I should have is not a stripe and then blue. I should have an ombre. I'm going to come back in and add a little more white into my brush. I'm going to dip it in water so I have, can improve flow, right? I'm coming back up into the sky, kind of. Lightening it and brightening the day. Again, we know where her hair is. And we're creating that ombre. If your paint's drying really fast, that can be hard. And I have a whole video on how to blend better because of that. Because it can be super challenging.
into that nice blend going up. Just back and forth. Dark blue to light blue. That's a very soothing blue. It's a very soothing blue, and that's what we're going for, just a nice soothing blue. And we're kind of keeping those lines horizontal. What would happen if you did them vertically? Mm, it wouldn't read to your mind as sky. It would look wonky. It wouldn't. It just would be very challenging to do vertical lines. You can do radial lines coming out of sky. But it's like very the, rare that you look up in the sky and see vertical strata. Very rare. It's not that it's I, never happened in the world, but. I like the fisheye one you sometimes do, too. Oh, I love the fisheye one I sometimes do, too. Where I put a conve concax on the, on the whole world. So now I've got, you know, it's just a distant sky. It's chill. It's blue. It's a little lighter at the bottom, a little darker at the top. It looks like summer. That's all we got to do here. I do want to dry it before I go on to the next step. And I do want to make sure I'm getting all oh. the paint out of my brush between steps. That's a good question. Hmm. How come you're not making the sky the exact same color as the reference image? Because hmm. I think it could be better. Okay. I, I just sometimes I have references, but I I'm references aren't. Um. We don't have to be so beholden to the reference that we can't make better artistic decisions. A lot of times things that work in a photograph might not be as beautiful in a painting and I might want my sky and sea to feel a little more summery or lighter. I didn't really, I might not have put that lens on my own personal camera even. So when you're, when you're doing references, you should be making artistic decisions that differ from the reference photo a lot unless you have something in the reference photo you really want to duplicate. And that would be the difference between referencing something and replicating something. Yeah, that is the difference between referencing and replicating. That's a good way of looking at it, right? So when we're replicating something, we're creating it exactly as we see it, right? We're trying to be organic copy machines. When we're referencing something, we're using the information the reference gives us to make good decisions in our own creative process, right? So if I say we're working from a reference photo, you know I might brighten a sky or improve a design decision or make something easier for you to paint at home. Now, right. We now we did the other day, we worked from a reference and we replicated it. We made a tiger's eye look like the reference photo. It was the thing. Now, now to that end, mm. if you picked a reference photo of a mouse and your picture really looked a lot like Mickey at the end, somebody might get upset. Yeah, you could get sued. Probably. I don't know. It's very look, they only have so many lawyers and so much time. But yes, it's a potential possibility in the universe of the internet. So, so you should, you know, be, okay, be so what you should know about my reference photos is that I pay for them. Oh, yeah. Right? I license them. I don't use them without permission ever. Um, and I use them within the constructs of how they say I can use them. So uh, that's an important thing for me to do as an artist uh, and as your teacher. And also we're doing them under the auspices of learning. Yeah. And I do make changes. Yeah, we don't paint exactly that painting. Because, I mean, like, ours could be a mermaid. Here, yeah, you keep talking to them about it, Not and sure I right. am going dry. to dry this. So, yeah, you got to dry the surface. But, yeah, you know, references are just for you to, and you might use multiple references when doing something. So, you know, it was, uh, it's, again, just one of those creative processes you'll find throughout history back to, like, some of your most favorite people, like Michelangelo and... Uh, da Vinci, those guys, those, they used references to make all their cool stuff. So, you know, anyway. Anywho. Something like, you know, I'm going to pull out the Teenage from Ninja Turtles and reference You're going to pull out the Teenager from Ninja Turtles and reference it? No, no. I'm going to get back into my work <laughs> stuff. All right. I want to reset my horizon line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come above my horizon a little bit. I'm going to set in my T square. Okay. And I'm going to come up a little, my, a little bit above my lowest paint line. I'm going to mix my phthalo oh, green wait, wait. and phthalo step. Can I give him a step? Step. Okay. I'm going to mix my phthalo blue and phthalo green together. It's a four step. I'm going to come across. Make sure I go all the way to the end there. All right. 
Now I'm going to wipe off <laughs> my ruler because I'm making it messy. I'm going to set my T-square to match up. Now I'm going to keep kind of this very aqua teal down below because with the roses, that's going to be really dramatic and beautiful and fun. So oh, yeah. I'm not going to get rid of that in any way. Not in any way. But the first thing I'm going to do is really kind of deepen this substantially. I'm going to paint all of it. Uh, I'm going to grab a nice big one inch brush here, like a house brush. But, you know, you could use one of those that you find at Ace. Super okay. Or Home Depot. And I'm going to mix my phthalo blue and phthalo green together. And come tidily along my nice neat horizon line. Just sort of deepen this up. Now what I do want to, when I'm painting bigger brushes, the thing that I'm going to want to watch for is too much water. Not that it won't bind, but I'm not trying to get too much water on this. I don't want drips. I just want flow. If I need to, I can always come back with my horizon line brush, right, mixing these two together, and make sure things are tidy here. Tidy. Doesn't have to be super complicated or stressful. It's just something. I can make the tidy a little further down over here, too. No, not painting up my face. I just know where it is, right? It's okay if my ocean goes into the area where I know I'm putting my face. Light water on the brush, mixing the phthalo green and phthalo blue together. Still doing horizontal strokes. Right? We are going to be doing horizontal strokes. And you can see we've got some really nice depth oh, yeah. to this green. Oh. Hmm. I just turned your mic up a little bit. Some folks were, let me turn mine up. Some mine folks, too? Well, some oh, or was were, mine low? Some folks were was saying. Was I yelling in their ear? No, or was, no, 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 no. So I think that previously I had both our microphones turned down just a bit too much. Oh, okay. So I turned ours both up and that means everyone will have to turn their mics down a little bit now. But okay. it'll be, probably be easier for everyone who can't hear us as well to turn, they won't have to turn their microphones up as, or their oh, okay. speakers Okay, so if you're much. at home and you're, and you're listening, you know, just be adjusting your sound for that reality. We, we, we may have made just a little adjustment for some folks. So uh, we'll try to keep it this way from now on. But so that's on, that? it's wet. The brush strokes are fairly horizontal. I used the biggest brush, so I'm not being detailed yet. One of the, th uh oh. Twix, it has wet and wet to do. <laughs> Which doesn't care. Twix says, it's time. Too much ignore. Too much ignore. Mm. You're good, good, good. All right. Still wet. <laughs> okay. And I'm going to get a little of my white into this mix. I might even get a smidge. Now, notice I'm coming carefully into my yellow. And I'm going to very lightly brush back and forth some highlights while the paint is still wet. I'm coming on a vertical. I'm not painting every part of the water. I'm breaking it around, right? Yeah. I'm just putting some varial tonal information into the water. There'll be more detail, but now what I have is a background that already kind of looks a little bit like water and a horizon and up that looks a little bit like sky. Yeah. So we get from here. If you can get here, you've gotten everything you need to get. You have completed 
this step of the journey. You have completed this step of the journey. This is the anchor. From here, you can get to a lot of places. In acrylic, we have things called underpaintings. These are the these are the anchor stages of a painting. A lot of people give up in these stages because they feel ugly and rough. But actually, if you trust the process and you keep adding layers, somewhere around the last third of the painting, it all just comes together like magic. If you're here and you've painted with me for a while and you know that's the process, let the new people know. It's in the last third that the whole plan comes together and that's what we all hang in for. All right, I'm going to dry everything so I'm get, I, I want to be able to rest my hand and kind of work specifically. I'm going to drag paint. And I don't need the next layer to be wet. Right. So we'll let's let dry you dry everything and go this. on to the next step. Okay. So you can probably still hear a bit of the uh, um, hair dryer in my mic, but as soon as I turn it off hers, you can really hear it. So yeah, you can hear a little of the background one. That's just sort of because our studio is small. It's very small. Well, ish. Yeah, it's small. It's not very big. We don't have a lot. We're right next to each other. She looks over and sees me all the time. So that's why I can, you can hear all this. Anyway, um, thoroughly dry your surface. Uh, and then we'll move on to a next step. In the meantime, oh, check the link in the description down below. There's lots of stuff for you to do. Do the human things like comment, subscribe, share. Uh, and then don't forget the step. So when we're going to paint water where there's a lot of reflection in, whether we're doing it in watercolor or acrylic, one of the tricks that we can do is wait to do the colors of the reflection that are more like of what's above, like the person, when we're doing the person. But we can do a lot of the ocean work before we get those skin tones in. And then we go into skin tones, we can take a little bit up here and work a little bit down here. It's a really cool trick to get a really realistic water effect without stressing your whole brain out. Deep breath. Take it down. Let's just breathe in the confidence and breathe away the doubt. Breathe in the confidence. Breathe away the doubt. Because we got this. You got this. Yeah. Okay. Now, I you can use a big round or a big, uh, or a filbert or just any of that. I'll just use, let me grab a nice big, oh, I got a big filbert. You could use a round here too, but this is a number 12 filbert from that line. I said that was a good quality brush for an economic price. Okay. So number 12, you could use round, you could use bright. It's more important that you get the shapes and values that I'm demonstrating than have this exact brush. I'm going to get my brush a little bit wet. I'm going to come in and get a little of my phthalo green and phthalo blue, even some, ooh, ultramarine blue. And let's come here. And make the shadow of a wave. That's a brush stroke from the left to the right. I kind of went up a little bit, making almost like a little hill, isn't it? There's a little bit of a shadow and a wave. Maybe one's going to come right here. And what we have is the beginnings of the shadows of the water. Sometimes they are small, sometimes they're big. I'm just using the toe of the brush. Remember, water is a mirror. In other words, it reflects everything around it, but it's also this fluid surface, and sometimes as the mirror kind of warps and bends, you can see different little parts of the depths there. Okay, so we're going to be just here, just working these little dark shadows. Piece those in. Right? Now as we go further away, I'm going to come back and forth a little more closely together, right? Thalo green, thalo blue, even a little ultramarine blue. Come back here, and these are shorter strokes. They go back and forth, pretty horizontal. And then we come forward. We don't really see the individual little moments as much as we do up close to us. That changes. 
maybe a little bit of a wave here. We can talk about it. Not that hard to actually do, kind of fun to do. A little up and down. Now it's true, I'm going to be coming through on her face, right? And come through here. But right now I'm just making sure we got some depth. You want some depth, right? A little of our phthalo blue, phthalo green, ultramarine blue again. And I'm going to come through here. Maybe on this left-hand side, let's, let's work some of this out as well. A little bit from the left towards the right up and down. I can come forward just completely making sure that it's broken up because we're seeing individual shadows in the waves. Uh oh. I'll check that out. Yeah. Oh, well then Scam likely can just suck it. Ah. <sighs> Just bringing in little bits. Now I know I'm going to be making lots of adjustments through here. Through here, changes will be made. We can begin to put in these little shadows here. We can begin to speak of our water up and down. And sometimes they go a little bit long and blend together. Look at the way that is making, um, here we go. Look at the way that that's making this sort of already look like water, right? We're just painting the shadow. Just really nice. Now I'm going to go ahead and get some maybe white onto my brush. I'll let it go into a little more green. Get some of our yellow in here. Let's really turquoise this up, right? A little more white. This, this is quite a light reflection. I'm just pulling some highlights in some of these places where we along top of the waves. Look at that from the right to the left. We're highlighting a little bit. We're adding some dimensionality. A little bit shorter here, just like the shadows. I'm not painting out my shadows. I'm painting around my shadows, between my shadows. And I'm still leaving some of what's already there, there. All right, leave some of what's there. Make sure you come out from the face a little bit into the water. Now, for some of you, this is going to really like make water make sense for the first time, maybe. You know, where you're like, oh, I'm understanding how the waves in the water actually get pay painted. And I don't mind just making as many classes on this as we can. It's completely fine. We're just exaggerating those values and those tones. Look at that water. Looks so watery, doesn't it? And we haven't even done any of the detail work that we're going to be doing all around the face where it's going to be just like that water reflection feels so real. How did that happen? So sometimes things are like ugly, ugly, ugly. And then, oh, wow, that actually, uh, that's okay. Maybe. Okay. Look at that. So many. <laughs> Let's call it a step. So many water signs here. So many people saying they feel comfortable in the water. Yeah, no, it is. It's a, I'm a cancer myself, so I completely get it. I think it's just uh, the idea of just floating for a minute in our life and our world. I mean, every day. And I, I know like if you're Gen X, right, your entire life has been a series of what TF, uh, every week and pivoting and you're like what fresh crazy am i dealing with today so we're we're got we got like we're like we're kind of zigging and zagging but even 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 we are kind of like okay you don't need to do all the things <laughs> we could skip some of the things we don't need to reference every 1980s dystopian movie in real life these aren't instructions <laughs> so it's okay to want to just float in the ocean and let it all just kind of drift away and be just like oh my god the world is crazy but not me today i don't have to join it i don't have to be a part of it i am going to dry everything and i am going to get a fresh cup of water remember to change your water i'm gonna make sure john can get my water so he can change them out easier too i could do that um 
a good thing to do is to keep your water clean as you're working. You just don't want a lot of pigment that's unexpected on your brushes. Let's try this. Mm. I think I can put my screen up now so it'd be a pretty view on the side. Nope. I did it. I didn't do it. I didn't do it at all. I can't do it at all. That's as much mostly. as I can. That's Somewhat. Somewhat. Okay. Sip a drink. There. Sip the drink. <sighs> Let's put up a step. You, you, I already put oh, up oh, a you step. you already put it up? But okay. I'll put a step up again after you dry. Yeah. That way, we're we're not going to go on to the neck. We're going to stay. We're going to stay announcing mm -hmm. the right thing. We're going to start working on the face. <sighs> yeah, the you know the face. So we'll get there. Thank you guys for joining us. It's really nice to see everybody out here. I have thoroughly enjoyed see, seeing everybody at the event who's here with us. Lovely to see you all in chat again. Um, I have not had a chance to post up since we have been back on Facebook much at all. Been dadding a bunch, as you can see. But this was the most enjoyable event we've had so far. I had a blast at it and really appreciate everybody who attended and made it a delight for me. That was super fun, yes. Okay, so now we've right. got to restep. We're going to restep and we're like, going to block in the face. I'm like, going to keep just using this filbert because it's... You know, when you paint with big on bigger canvases, sometimes it's nice to have bigger brushes, um, just so you don't have to work as hard to cover what you've got. When you paint hair, when you paint skin, it's a good idea to just like the ocean, you want to block in an underpainting. So when you put in highlights, when you put in shadows, it can reveal itself. And I think it's going to surprise you at how easy it is to actually paint hair. Uh, hopefully, how easy it is for you guys to paint skin. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to just take my burnt sienna. I'm a burnt sienna. And I'm going to come in on the inside of the eye here. And I'm just going to arc over. Mm. You know how and this maybe is... Maybe uh, under the lid here, I'm going to arc there. It's interesting. You know how you can tell she's in an infinity pool and not in the ocean? Mm. There's no sharks. Stop with the sharks, you. That's how you know. Gonna go ahead and just make sure that that's nice and dark. I'm gonna come around here, pull in a shadow on this left side with the burnt sienna. I'm just, just starting to talk about John distracted me with the shark <laughs> thing, and then I, I have to go back I, and I, the shark broke your concentration. It just drink. really did. <laughs> okay, back over to that. Where the eye is, the face has to indent. Sharks are no sharks. <laughs> right. There we go. Also, maybe under the hair, come in with a little bit of brown. And then I'm going to just work a little bit of my yellow ochre. This is going to just be, be the beginning of the base. We're just thinking about things. Aaron says that she's safe because Kevin is hanging out below. Kevin is hanging out below, so she's okay? Kevin the Kraken, our old friend who hasn't <laughs> visited us in a bazillion, bazillion days. Bazillion years. You have to go back to some of our much older videos to find Kevin the Kraken. He hasn't visited us in a while. It's true. We need a Kevin the Kraken return. Well, actually, I, I say that. That's not true because you did a really great tentacle in the um, dice yeah. Splash, that was a really good one. If you haven't seen the dice splash, it's a round one. It's a round one. It was super good. It it also had some water skill. I in. love you, babe. I'm Sorry. gonna teach. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna wanna put brown under the hair, kind of over here. What I'm just doing is letting myself again just know where the features are. This isn't my last conversation about features. Hmm. Right? We're just making sure that we don't lose what we sketched in and we've got a basis of a good basis for skin tone. Right. She's a very warm skin tone. And so I can really work in this space and enjoy that. Just putting this on here. When I have her in, I can just go right into my black weirdly. And you wouldn't think it's black, but it is. 
And, oh, I can't. You know why? Why? Just have a little bit of air showing. Oh. Right here, I'm going to just set an ear. Remember, glasses have to sit on something. There we go. So I just gave myself a little bit of ear. When I put it on the hair, that'll make it easier. Just loading up the black. Brush stroke up. And over here where there's bangs. So see, I go up where the hair is being gathered up. And then down where the bangs are going across the face. And I know I'm going to be messing with this ear a minute, but I don't care. And I can even exaggerate a lot of this, which is going to be a lot of fun on the hair. Bring that around on black upward stroke. So we're starting to talk about hair directionality. And just the mass that the hair is, just its mass. We're not uh, going to paint. When you paint hair, you don't paint every individual hair. You paint its form and value and then a few individual hairs. But you got to get its form first. And I'm using a dark value to begin with. Uh, and the reason for that is that I can really build it up from here with ease. And get the contrast I need for the depth of the hair. I don't have to worry about every individual hair that's going every. It looks crazy right now. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Even with John distracting me, I we are gonna get there. <laughs> I don't mean to. No, I don't mean no, to no. You. It's just sharks, and I'm like, ah, Kevin, ah. <laughs> and that's what John John does, because like what John does is make sure that um, <laughs> when I'm focused. But also, too, that uh, my energy is staying up. Okay, I'm going to bring a little shadow kind of information in here. I've got a little depth in here. See how even that starts to pull in what we need to know about the face. Not a lot to say. I have to just get this first part in. Mm. I have to dry all of this. How it goes from this crazy abstract to a really lovely skin tone and hair is actually a really fun process. And the reason it's hard for beginners to do acrylic painting is they don't know that this is a process. It feels like it should be different than what it is. And so it becomes a block. But once you see the layers, now, you're there. For mm. our international folks mm. that have a wide variety of skin tones. You have other painting lessons. Oh, yeah. So yes, I have, listen, if you want to paint a different skin tone on her, knock yourself out. I got other videos about that and you can totally do that. They will help. It will help. And remember, it's completely okay to paint paintings that reflect yourself and your life. That's, that's totally all right. Mm -hmm. I am, remember, it's a reference and you're not beholden to it. Right. All right. All right. I'm going to dry it and we're going to go on to the next step. So, again, while she's drying that, don't forget to check out link in the description down below for stuff that you might find useful, like the traceable, the reference. Uh, I mean, like, um, I think, I think there'll be a reference image down there. There'll be a mini book. You guys, we do these little things called mini books, which are step-by-step -step guide to help you paint the painting with all the things that you, you think you might need just written down so you can reference it. And... Those are free. Our mini books, I just tell them about them. Those oh, yeah. are free, and uh, they generally come, you know, about a week or two after each video. But you'll find them in the link in the description down below or on our website. But you can you can kind of see it's coming together. Oh yeah. Yeah, you know where she's going. You know what she's doing. Um, we've got the roses right here, so we don't really have to worry about anything below this. We've barely got an ear we have to sort of hint at, and we've just got to kind of make 
the planes of the face have the right highlights and shadows to look like what they are. And because the eyes are closed, we don't even got to worry about that, right? Mm. Now, we paint the face first so we can get the reflection in the water and so we can get the face in, but also because the hair is on top of the head and is over the face. And then we paint the roses last because the roses are in front of all of that. Huh. You guys didn't know. Why are we doing it in this order? Because that layering helps us create nice line and brush stroke. There. I'm going to use a smaller hog brush. Look at this brush. There's a number 12 Raphael Ar D Artigny brush. And I'm going to start to mix some basic skin tone. So I'm going to take a little of my quinacridone. And I'm maybe putting up more uh, yellow ochre. And I'm going to mix these two together and get kind of a two red, a pinked, pinked yellow ochre smidge smidge of burnt sienna into it come here under the hair above the brows and uh, definitely here on the bridge of the nose we're not going to free to her. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. Now, as I need to lighten things, there's two ways I'm going to lighten the skin. I'm going to add white or I'm going to add yellow ochre. I'm going to put out some more yellow ochre. Those are the two ways I'm going to lighten her skin tone. I'm going to deepen the skin tone with either this gray here or my burnt sienna. A little more yellow ochre in there. There we go. It's lighter. It's not like. Come here and I'd say that's even still. That's probably the lightest reflection on the skin right here. Right here in this corner brow over the bone. I'm going to just do kind of a scumbling motion. Where these are wet, I'll blend them together lightly coming over this way. I'm going to wipe off the excess pigment on my brush. Get a little more yellow ochre into this. There we go. I want just a nice highlight on her forehead. Blendy, 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 blendy. Hi, Twix. How are you? I see you. I see you. I am here. I see you. Just blendy blends. Notice I'm just using the edge of this brush, the toe of the brush, to work the wet paint together. And I'm using the irregular directionality of what I've got going on to blend. A slightly darker skin tone here. A little more burnt sienna when I need it. Yes, blendy, 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 blendy. Again, first pass, first like serious value pass that we're making. Right, first value pass that we're making. Now here under the eye, it should actually be quite light because it's a reflection. Almost like just light reflecting off of a surface. Up the lid there. Oh, wonderful. So if I have the highlight here and we want on the lid, I'll put it a little bit above the brow bone here up into the forehead. Let's just scumble that around. Let's soften that, right? Soft blending. We know we've got a little bit here on this lid inner eye here. 
And it is lighter across here, but it won't be as light as it is over on this cheekbone because of where the more focal light is coming above, but a little bit angled. Maybe a little bit tipped at that lid right there. Soft, 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 soft highlight. Almost a dry brush. My brush isn't particularly wet now. Going in, a little more of my base skin tone, yellow ochre, quinacridone magenta. You can also do yellow ochre and uh, cad red makes another really nice skin tone. Oh, thank you. Coming in and kind of softening this dark line that I put in in the first place. I don't really need to even take the whole thing out because we have some sharp shadows on her. Now, remember I said that we had this gray over here, which was the uh, ultramarine blue in Burn Sienna. Fun trick, I like to use ultramarine blue for my shadows on skin tones. I'm going to make sure that that lid is nice and dark under, under the lashes here and dark to this left side here. There's a nice shadow. This was ultramarine blue in Burn Sienna. And I'm going to mix it into my skin tone. Make kind of a shadowy color. Now I'm going to have, you know, shadow lashes and stuff like that. So there's definitely a lot of work we're going to be doing. I'll come into the hair a bit. Right? There's little loosely hairs that are going to be coming down. I'll just make sure that there's a shadow here. Maybe a little bit of light here. This is all peeking behind the hair, so we are not really going to see a lot of it. We just need to know it's there. A little pink. Again, we're going to be peeking behind the hair. We just need to know we have an ear here. Oh, hey, babe. Back into my shadow color. Okay, maybe just a, just dust. Oh my gosh, I'm just barely touching the brush to the canvas. Should just offload the smallest little bit of shading. And again, under the eye here. Over the lid. The lid's kind of an almond shape. So that's the kind of shape that you're trying to maintain, you know, is that almond shape. A little yellow ochre. And get right into the white. But it's darker than the highlight. I'll probably blend the highlight back in in just a minute. So I do have a bit of a shadow down this nose. I'll have to come put that highlight back in a little bit. A little highlight on the bridge of the nose. This is a lot. Let's call this a step. I'll make a cup of coffee. You guys catch up with me because what we're really being the face in this guys, you're really learning a lot about facial structure, skin tone, and how we paint the highlights and shadows on a face to get that face shape. What makes you ever see that thing where you see a pipe and it looks like a smiling face. That's what we as artists are always leaning into. Mm -hmm. We're leaning into that natural inclination of your brain to want to see a face. I'm going to make a cup of coffee. You guys catch up to me. John's going to throw up another step. Only, only just because we'll do I, don't, I don't want you guys to get uh, overwhelmed. I'll wait for you to get your cup of coffee made. In the journey. You can see them up there. Huh? They're up there. Oh, uh, okay. Hi, I'm making coffee. Thank you, babe. Can't seem to work that today. 
So my instructions are to not stir with a pallet knife today. Yeah. I know you did. <laughs> I stir with pallet knives and John's I got like, you a spoon. Death, death to the wife because the wife is going to have cadmium and you're not supposed to put any cadmium in your body. She should never stir with a pallet knife. Is that sufficient? Mm. Not watery. That is, that is good coffee, okay, good. sir. How you guys doing? Stressful to paint a face. So just go. Not painting a face and painting a forehead. Basically just doing the pain manners. Just gonna paint a forehead. It has mm. my edge to it. So let's take a deep breath. You got this. Now while we're getting this, let's begin to think about a little bit. I'm gonna put up perhaps a smidge. I don't know if I had it in my thing, a little smidge of cad red. I'm going to take a little nope. of my cad now. yellow and my cad red. Let's make a step. Now I'm giving a step. Yeah. Take a little smidge of the cad red oh. and the cad yellow. Eight. We're going to make this it should orange. Be step eight. Huh? Shh. This should be step eight. Let's get some burnt sienna into here. And let's start to shape in our hair. A little burn sand in here. We're going to just get the major values and directionality of the hair. It's actually pretty fun. Major values. How light or dark it is. A little black into there to. You are not painting hair. No. Try to get it out of your head that you're painting hair. No. I'm going to take a little bit of a dark value here and kind of put in a shadow because I want to capture the way the hair collects in the bun. I'm going to add a little bit of. And I know there's a nice little bit coming down here. Every once in a while, rinse out. I'm just going to. Paint in my hair. Keep it painting. Yeah, let's just keep painting. A little bit of our red and burnt sienna and yellow. Now, there's little individual hairs. Of course, we're going to get involved in. All right, so it's the red and yellow make orange with a little burnt sienna in it. These are the darker values of the hair. Notice I'm curving that bit with sweepy. It's sweepy. It's sweepy. Hair has sweep. Hair has sweep. Hair has also goes over kind of very expressively from the right into the into the center. Look already. It just starts oh, to be what it is. It and that is awesome. That's our favorite part, right? Yes. Now, down below, I'm going to get in a little bit of my brown and my black. She has a darker root. A rootage. Ah. And we're okay with that. We're going to definitely honor that. I'm pulling the hair up in the direction that I see it. Now, that's where my reference comes in handy. How would I paint a bun like this? My reference comes in handy because I can look at the directionality of the hair in this photo and it helps me see how I would paint that. Uh. And that's, you know, that's what it's for to help me see how. How do I paint this? Where are my shadows? Where are my highlights? Where's the reflections? How the hair falls over itself and layers over itself. This is the burnt sienna and the black right now. When we get the reflections in, that's when you'll see this hair. Yeah. This hair gets painted by reflection. This hair gets painted by reflection and hue. Kind of getting some depth into here.
a little bit out into the sky. A little blue show through because, you know, her hair's loose. Yeah. This hair hangs loose. Nice hair. Now, fun trick. Rinse out. Wipe off the brush. Remember where our skin tone lives? Over here. We need to make sure that we're going to see some skin tone up under the hair. So that's what I'm doing here. Just making sure. Kind of like she's got a lace front on. <laughs> I don't. What's that? That's a type of wig. And um, it has a thing where you can match it into your skin tone and even add makeup to it. It blends into your hair better. And what I'm trying to do is just make sure that we've got some of her skin tone up in her hair. Right now we're kind of giving her bald spot, but only temporarily. Just so that when we paint that, we see a little bit of that hair coming through. And I'm going to let that dry. I can't do this part of the hair yet because it's so on front of the face. So I'm just getting the parts I can get. Gotcha. Let's scoop that in. Maybe a little darker. Curving in from right to left, scooping it in. You know, and then I can get back into my brown and yellow, brown and red. Hmm. Hmm. What's hmm? I'm just looking at the way it's flowing and how it's capturing. Hmm. I've got to do directionality of brushes to even get the depth. And I am trying to get the depth because we'll see the hair as much from the shadows and directionality as the highlights. She is not shallow. Huh? She does not have shallow hair. It has depth. Oh, my goodness. Her hair has so much depth. One of the reasons it was such a fascinating reference was how much the hair was just really part of the subject. Mm. Now, I am going to kind of bring in a little bit some of the dark hair. I'm on the edge of my brush. I'm just making sure it's coming in there. I've got a specialty brush to get a little more in-depth than that. I've got a hair comb that does a really good job of putting little individual hairs. But now we see kind of some of her skin, right? Yeah. Look at us go. Look at us go. A little bit of our red and yellow. Coming up, a little twist there. A little twist there and under. That's just a start, the beginning of the hair. Oh, fun. Super nice. Super fun. Change water. Change water. Our brains are a little bit rested from the skin tone. Sometimes I do that for you guys. Sometimes I'm like, let's rest a minute from something and tackle something else. That way we get out of our own heads. Mm. That way we have a chance to look at it passively, not in a panic. And sometimes I look at our art from kind of a panic place of like, oh, it's not right, it's not right, it's not right, it's not right, it's going wrong, it's going wrong. Oh man, that happens to me too. That happens to everybody. Very natural thing. But you've got to like use some tools to get back to you. Look at it passively, like from the corner of your eye. Mm -hmm. Just kind of casually. That's why we step back and sort of observe the art. We're trying to get out of it to see it. Do you have any questions before we move on to the next step where we blend more face? I think this is really good. I was just looking over here and seeing everyone is really having a nice time. They really enjoy this uh, and the reference materials you have. You can uh, 
uh, it, there's a resize link in here if you need to work on slightly larger or smaller uh, surfaces. Mm -hmm. So there's our moderators are doing a great job of helping. I love our moderators. Team moderator, everybody give some moderators the love. These are painters just like you, viewers just like you. They just come in and volunteer their time, many of them, for all these crazy long shows that we do. Couldn't do it without them either. And yeah, a lot of them are just, you know, our community is helping answer as many questions as the moderators out here. So thank you guys. You guys are the best art community in the world. Yes. All right. This is, uh, is this another step? Another step. Let's get another step in here. Another step up there? Yeah. The ninth <laughs> step? Maybe. I'm going to take a little bit of my yellow ochre into my quinacridone with some burnt sienna. While we're here. I'm going to wiggle a little of this into the water. Now up front here, almost entirely, almost don't see that much blue. Just a little bit of the quinacridone and the... Great time to just put it in there. Water is a mirror. Yeah, it's a reflector. It is. Take a little bit of white into it, maybe a little yellow ochre. Let's get some of these lighter skin tones in that water. because the water is in motion much like when we did the bear yeah we've got a little bit of leeway to get a good result from what we've got going on right mm -hmm. coming out a little bit with the light color Ooh, there's a timer going off. Children food. Ah. I'll leave you over here to look over your shoulder. I might even come in and get a little of my rose color now. I know I'm going to be in the pink in a minute. Just the start. Now I have a little bit of my brown and black. Mm. Like, uh, what time am I, I'm out? Yes. Just a little darker down here because, again, we've got the hair. Right? A little bit there, we have the hair. What that should be giving us is that sense of, oh, look at that water reflection coming. So much fun! So much fun painting summer stuff. Isn't she beautiful? Just add a little white in there, kind of get it into the... Okay. Look at that go. We've got a little bit there. That's nice. So we took some of the skin tone we mixed and get it out into the water. Uh, let's call that a mini step and then we'll go in and come back in the skin. Mini step. step? Mini step. It's the step. <sighs> Gotta finish her up. A little bit of my yellow ochre into my quinacridone magenta and 
Sienna. Where I know I've got shadow, I can get up into my blue gray, which was my ultramarine blue. So let's come over here again and kind of still be thinking about this. Got shadow here, shadow under hair. Right? I'm just keeping the moisture controlled on my brush. A little white into that to lighten it. Definitely lighter there. A little bit here. A little darker skin tone, right? Which is what I'm doing here is I've got a mix of quinacridone, yellow ochre, and burnt sienna. And I'm working in white or the ultramarine blue to create values. Or burnt sienna. We're creating values that way. A little more burnt sienna in my brush. Start to blend in this kind of, remember this cheek is a little darker than that far cheek. Dry brushing there. A little yellow ochre and white. Santa with me, you're very familiar with this method. On the nose, I want kind of a hot reflection. Does that make sense? Hot reflection does, on the yeah. nose. Very light here. I'm just dusting and blending it in. See how just barely touching the canvas I am? That's how I'm getting that diffused effect. I'm not blending one into wet. I'm just using brush stroke as a way to control my value. Right here, a little bit of a highlight, right? into my skin tone. Now maybe a little more with the burnt sienna. Because it's in the shadow of the lid. Mm. And I can really work into my ultramarine blue Sort of exaggerate the shadow here. Brushing that in. Shadow. How are we doing? Oh, she's really getting good. there. We've got to fix the far uh, left eye. Uh, and that you. Okay, 
So we've got some lid stuff to work in. This brush is, I either have to work the corner or I just have to get a tidier brush. Right. So temporarily, I'm going to take a number four round and work some specifics inside the lid. I'm still working my skin tones. Number four round, little soft brush stroke, still dry brushing, still softly working it. I just want to make sure that, you know, even, even here, even the shapes that I've got going here, even highlighted chat, it's like there's a highlight shadow in the skin tone. Right there in that highlight above the lid, but it's like in that gray value. A little bit of the rosier. Rosier color. A little bit of my dark color here. Oh, I exaggerated that a lot. Oh, those look kind of cool, though. <laughs> That'll happen sometimes. I'll get, I'll get exaggerated. That's okay. I'm just going to watch the edge of my brow bone. A little bit of my burnt sienna and my Mars black over here. And come above this inside crease. Actually, I may step back and just make sure I have my line correct. Yeah. Right? That's, that's one of the things that I've got to do is I've got to make sure that my lines are correct. I guess I need to drop one of these down or raise one up. I'm just kind of edging this one down. Because hmm. they will be on the same plane. These two should be on the same plane. Hmm. When I have that, come in and put a dark kind of angular shadow there. Upper brush strokes with Mars Black and Burn Sienna. Ooh, do I have an eyebrow? Yes, I do. You look nice. I have an eyebrow. Now, eyebrows don't have to be twins, but they should be sisters. Remember where you start your eyebrow is kind of right there. The corner inside of the eye. At the very least, they should be cousins. Identical cousins. Right? Yes, at the very least, you want them to be cousins. Because you can have, like, one raised, but, like, they should look like they're related to each other. There we go. Getting there. We're getting there. A little bit of our skin tone with white. Now, when I put those highlights in, I may come back to my hog brush and kind of blend these out a bit with the softness of the brush. See how I can do? I do.
Yes, a little bit of a glow right there. Just kind of accentuating the mm -hmm. brow bone. A little bit of our skin tone, some white. One more yellow ochre into it. Mm -hmm. Kind of blending it in. Remember, this side is lighter. Just generally, and the other side. Just bringing these little things here. And I know I get quiet, but I'm also thinking about where are my shadows? I've got shadows here, if shadows here. I want a little bit of shading under the brow bone. A little bit out to the corner. A little bit of titanium white into, and I'm going to add a little yellow ochre to it. So titanium white and yellow ochre. Remember, you get to have fun here because we're going to put some roses on here. So you really get to play and learn how you paint it. And then you get to enjoy covering it all up. Mm -hmm. All right, little, a little better highlight right here. Yeah, that's some nice sunlight on her. Be not as light as that brightest highlight, but we're gonna come across here and sort of lighten this all up. Mm -hmm. My yellow ochre and white now. And notice it's just a very light brush. I could blend with a glaze. I could blend a lot of different ways, but right now I'm just using dry brushing to create the effect. A little white, a little yellow. Let's see how we're doing now. Oh, she's looking really good. I like her a lot. Mm -hmm. Me too. All right. Let's get her to here. And then I'll show you what we're going to do next. I'm going to sip my coffee. Next step. Next step. How's the, how's the coffee doing? It's good. It could use a warm up, crazily enough, already. I can imagine. Was I gone that long? Oh, okay. <laughs> just, 
Sometimes when I'm painting, it's like I'm gone. Like I'm not even there it's anymore. It's just temperature it's differential just things. So know. crazy. All right, let's do some detail on her. Okay. I'm going to get my brush, my number four round. I'm going to come in and get a little bit more of my black and burnt sienna. Mostly black. I'm going to stay peeking over your left shoulder so I can. Uh... Make sure that there's good flow off the brush. On the toe, just looking at little, shaping out that brow. Come right here, some more deal. Looking pretty good. All right, now I'm going to thin this out a little bit. This is not the lashes, guys. This is the shadow. So you want this to be almost a glaze. I've thinned it with water. It's not thick. Maybe even come in and glaze the brows to fill them out. You know, sometimes you fill out your own brows and glaze in a darker little value around the dark crisp lines. Back into my glaze. This is a glaze, not the lashes. It's important to know that because... All right, I'm going to even thin this a little more. It will look more of what it is when we, um, let's also really kind of, you know, exaggerate some of these shadows we're going to be putting up in the hair. Right? Because we've got these wonderful shadows. Can even get into that gray a little bit. I'm just brushing a little glaze with like maybe lid creases underneath here. Is that a little shadow there? Glaze, thin transparent coats of color. All right, now, huh? Yeah? All right, so I'm going to get a detail brush. Detail, this is a number one monogram liner. And I'm going to do the very stressful work of actual lashes. Little short brush strokes just on the toe of the brush. <sighs> nice dark, dark, dark value. If I need to, I'm going to come here and I'm trying to stay out of John's way. Oh, you're fine. I can see. Oh, that's a good eye. All right. 
The only thing I wish you could do is rotate the surface to make it easier for yourself. Oh, I wish I could do that too. But you know, she's got a little bit of a shadow on there. Start getting under that lid. Little lashes going down. Mm -hmm. Now, in lashes, you know, they have a curve, right? They have the directionality. Coming towards you, they're going to be a little bit straighter, and then as they come away, they're going to have a little more of a curve to them. It would be nice to have natural lashes that long. It would be. Bad, 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 bad. Ah, she's doing good. She really is. There are some folks that are blessed with like those eyelashes for miles. Add some of these little detail bits up into the brows. We don't mind. We don't mind. And the thinned black and brown paint. Mm -hmm. I roll my brush and I get it up on the toe and I just work it through here. Gets away from me, I can come in and finger soften it. Fun stuff, my friends. Mm -hmm. Nice little Coachella liner. Hopefully we'll get it the other way. Yeah. Get back from that and see how that's going. <sighs> Yay! Yeah. <laughs> Yay! A little bit of white on here. Look kind of dots and stuff here, guys. A little bit of an extra highlight on that lid. Mm -hmm. All right, let's call that a thing. A thing? A thing. Let's call it a thing. Come a back and do another thing. Step. A whole step. A whole step. A whole step. Oh my no. goodness, guys. You feeling it yet? Mm hmm. Me too. I'll put out a little more white right now because my white's getting a little gummy and I'll need to be able to get it to flow. So I just put up a couple of bit fresh bits of white. That's and I'm gonna be using something called a this is the Princeton Velvet Touch Filbert Grainer. Another tool you might find this, you know, as is a grass comb. Hmm. Same, same. So basically it's a filbert that's been all snipped at the end, so it gives you individual hairs. That's all it is. Do we have a new step? Yes. All right, let's get some black. We're going to come here into the hair. Remember how I told you it was going to be like, we're going to get in there and kind of individual hair it out? Mm -hmm. This is where that is. Gives that little area up front just more of a See how that's going. Yeah, a little bit of a realer look. Yes. I'm going to come here, and it's brown and black. 
and I'm thinning it with water. Sometimes I come on the edge of it to get a sharp edge, and then sometimes I work into the filbert of it to get individual hairs. Mm. Remember how I said we'd only see peaks of the ear? This is what I mean. Just peeking out from behind some Just hairs. peeking out from behind the hair. This is that first little weird part of the hair. And I can always come in and get a little bit of my burnt sienna and um, yellow and red, that sort of orange brown we're doing at the top hair. Thinning it with water. Pretty great, isn't it? And you can do this with an individual brush hair by hair if that is your preference. Nothing wrong with it. Nobody's allowed to be mad at you over it. <laughs> the hair we just build up a little bit over time. The red and the yellow. Mm, no, I'm going to actually do the reflection differently than that. I'm going to go into the gray blue. How are you loading the brush with lots of paint? Or, or is it just a little bit of paint? Just a little bit of paint. Just a little bit of paint. Yeah. I come here and I'm going to find some reflections. We're going to do them at first in our gray blue. Hmm. We're not painting gray hair. We're painting reflections on her hair. Always get a little more white into it. Give it a slightly brighter reflection. Yeah. In the sun. Now we'll leave that for a second. We've got more to work on, but I want to fill out more of what I've got here. This is just a nice layer to get into. Back into our original hog brush. 
yellow and red with a little bit of burnt sienna, and sometimes even now yellow ochre. Coming here with a little bits of bray highlight. Do you hear? Yes, I do. That is short cake trying to taunt me to play with her. She's a little bit of white to that. Brought over her little toy. Give it that. And we've just got this sort of wonderful messy bun to paint. Look at that go. As her hair comes in. I love it. A little bit of white into that sometimes. It's kind of shading and valuing the hair. Ooh, at those flowing hairs. Well, we've got those little chunks. They're kind of coming off and going wild, right? I have to get those shaded in. I might come in with a little bit of dark color and just make sure that these are looking correct. Mm -hmm. yeah, this is really awesome. Lots of folks saying how awesome this is. I'm I so agree. glad you guys are having fun with it. It's just one of those wild ones. It's going to be a lot of fun. A little bit of the yellow and orange, just playing with those colors. Getting right now the shape and flow of the hair. Ah. So like, where is the hair falling? What is it doing? How is it doing it? How is it doing? How is it doing what it do? Grab a little white. Let's pull some reflections on this hair. Just for a moment before we get into any details. Just mm. pulling these in again where there's sunlight capturing the hair. I want to capture highlights in the hair and I'm kind of right now painting it really just observationally and loosely, which means I'm not doing each individual hair yet. I'm kind of 
doing value, and then I'll come in and individual hair. Ah, highlight the strand. Yeah, we'll pull more in like, you know, oh, uh, maybe you want to make that darker. Right, just kind of uniforming that. Yeah. Looking good. So we're starting to get her hair, her crazy, wonderful, wild hair. Then I can come in and take my individual brush. And take my yellow and orange. And talk about each of these little locks more specifically. See how I'm doing? If I tried to do the whole head with this brush, I would be exhausted. It'd be too detaily. It just, it, it, too many little tiny. Sometimes it is a little bit too many little tiny things, isn't it? Yeah. You can always come in and add a little bit of whatever color that you've got going on into the water. Over into my brown. More of those little highlight individual yeah, strands. Yeah, we're just coming in, you know. Now we're, now we're getting there. All the little hairs. Same. Same brush, number four round, just using my red and yellow, my cad red and my yellow, cad yellow. Just making sure that it starts to look a little loose. Right. This is where we put in that time. Yeah, the last bits. The last bits. And we haven't even done the flowers across the front, guys. Those are going to come in so nice. It's going to be so pretty. And it's going to all just work together. And it's just going to feel like the summer. This is our aspirational summer.
Just making sure. Very nice painting. I like it. I thought it would be something kind of fun. They're enjoying it here in the chat with us. I would hope so, because this is just one of those, those lovely ones that says, you can do it. Lots of fun to be had here. Go, looking pretty good. Now, rinse out, back to the Filbert Grainer. Hmm, the Grainer. Don't go against the Grainer. You can paint a little highlights here and there on the hair. Your little reflections. How that's looking? Oh, nice. Yeah. A little bit of the light capturing the hair. No, reflecting off because it's healthy. Right, that's what it is. It's healthy hair, so it's got little reflections. See how that looks. Oh. Very nice. Very good. Very good. Very good in the neighborhood. What a fun hairstyle to do. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's call that a step. We come back. Gonna add some flowers yeah. to this calm and interesting sea day. Fun stuff. The next one is the step with no name. Yep. Step with no name. The step. That shall not be, be named. But we gotta, we gotta, we gotta identify. It's gotta be a step. We I'm just gonna get clean water. I'll tell you that right now. Name the step. Baby steps. It's a step. All right. So I'm gonna use a round. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I'll stay on the same round. Number four round. This is a little bit longer of our, than our normal paintings. No. And the next ones coming will all be super short and chill. We're going to do a bunch of one hoots next. Well, this is going to go pretty... into summer. Your kids are getting out of school. You're painting with family. We're going to get some nice one hoot paintings. Mm hmm. I'm taking a little of my phthalo green and my burnt sienna together. I'm going to paint a leaf. A leaf is kind of like a little rounded diamond shape. I am painting that by pulling my brush back into a center line. This one right here. These leaves. Yeah. Right. Are the ones that are on the roses. They're sort of tucked against her face. Which is why I didn't worry too much about certain aspects of her face. Because I was like, I'm going to put a bunch of flowers over it. So there's literally no point. You guys like that? Yeah. So you see where the leaves are? Once I have the green in, I'm going to add cad yellow to the mix. Okay. 
and come here on maybe the sides. A little bit of the cad yellow. So what you'll have is a deep green with a little bit of yellow on top of it. And then, oh, a lot of yellow on top yeah. of it. A little bit of white. Come on, a little edge here. There's there. A reflection. Everything we have, babe? Yeah. So I would just... Uh, a little bit on the edge there. One of the things... I'll, I'll, let, I'll let you get through here, so then I'll kind of explain what's happening. Did we lose the stream? No, 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 no. Okay. All right. So we got to let that dry or dry it before we put on the flowers because we want them to be nice and pink. Yeah. So one of our community members, uh -huh. is, she's at in a public place watching you paint. Hi! And she's having a great time. Yay! And someone was being uh, petty and passive aggressive as they walked by and made some, you know, how they make those open statements like, oh, yeah. don't you have anything better to do with your time? At and, her, me. At her. So, you know, and it's just they're being passive aggressive. Are you aggressive responsible and petty. for the core of the universe? Are you holding us all together? Because if, like, you're the one holding the entire strings of the universe together, I guess you would have something better to do with your time. If you enjoy painting. But if you enjoy painting, you're doing exactly place. what you should be doing is, with yeah. your time. This is people are so funny, aren't they? Like the hubris or impetus or ego involved in telling somebody else how their time should be you know, spent. Their time on earth, a finite amount of time that belongs to them. You can always tell something about somebody, whether they're kicking down or punching up. That's right. John and I had that saying. Are you kicking down or are you punching up? punch up man people are just like and it's so cheap right it's so easy it so requires nothing of them does it just to be like is this what you should be doing with your time i mean yes if you should be in heart surgery please put down the video and go do heart surgery you might have something important to do but if you have a lot of time for your entertainment in your creative space and you're spending it that way or you're lightening your mood or your spirit this is your time on earth. It belongs to you. It is finite. It is yours. And I mean, unless you get a divine message sending you to do something else, you get to do what you want to do. People need to get out of each other's business. That's right. Y'all know how I feel about this. They need um, to, you do you in the way that makes you happy. You don't tell me what to do with myself, my body, my time. We let each other do what we've got to do to flourish and thrive. Is this a trigger for me? No. John, John's had to grab me back from people before and be like, From the abyss. You do you. You do you. You do you. <laughs> I'll do me and then we'll be fine. It only gets to be a thing when you tell me what I need to do for you. Did I, strong? Too strong? I don't know. I don't know. That's is how it, I feel about is, it. It's is honest this a, truth. Did, did, I, did I, was this an intentional step place or was this just a... No, this was a step okay, place because we got to, we got to dry it all the way. So I'm going to dry it. You dry but it. That's what, that's what I think of that. I think you're spending your time exactly how you should if you're spending it how you want. Yes. Unless you should be in heart surgery, then by all means go do heart surgery. And yeah, so that's what I was trying to say is that, you know, Cinnamon and I believe that, uh, you know, it's really easy to, so, to, to try to you know, pick on somebody because, you know, there's an, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're struggling or they're a flaw. They're trying to do something new and it's, it's much easier for people to find that. Cinnamon and I don't, don't but, really appreciate that kind of action. So we, we tend to look for those who uh, fight above their wave class and try <laughs> to take down bigger, meaner opponents. And I'm not uh, even trying to take anybody down. Well, you know, the, they, if you're going to take on a cause, you know, I mean, I can understand benchmarking yourselves or like standing against evil. I absolutely believe speak to evil, speak to evil for sure. Don't let something wrong and unjust go by without a word. But I mean, you know, like who, who do we need to kick? 
Like we need to work together. We need to help each other. Nobody's got no time to kick. If y'all haven't noticed, the planet's on fire. So we should just be on each other's team for just a half a second and work as a, Until work as a the united UF family. Unless you, y'all have another rock to live on, which, I mean, I watch YouTube a lot. And it seems like all the other habitable planets are super far away. We got the, a whole new Pentagon hearing on the UFOs. The A, what are they called? UAPs. You know what? The UAPs haven't come and offered me a ride to another planet. So, you know, maybe we're together. Maybe get Yet. out of each other's business a little bit. Maybe a little bit support each other in our, you know, individual lives. How we, you know, should live them as long as we're not hurting anybody else. Yeah. <sighs> but no. Which is why I have to paint every single day. Even That's because we sick. get to paint every single <laughs> day. I, we get to paint every single day. That's not, in, no way a thing for me, is it? You guys were just like, oh, wow, we broke the Sherpa. No. All so, right, now I'm going to do some roses, and I'm just going to do some fun roses because I don't, I, I don't, I don't want to be all stressed out on my roses at this stage, right? You need mellow roses. I'm going to do some mellow roses. So I'm going to take a little bit of my cad yellow and my quinacridone magenta, and I'll, I'll load this nice and up Is there on an... my brush. This is step. Oh, yeah, no, no, I was curious. Is there an ocean rose? No, but she brought roses to the ocean, so that is a choice that she made, and I support her choice. Ah. Okay. I gotta swim out and tell her to put her roses down because I don't like roses. <laughs> you know what I mean? And if they're not poisoning the fish and I'm not part of Parks and Rec, it ain't my business. Roses. Shark bait that you didn't know is shark bait. <laughs> now that might be a thing. When I put out rose color, sometimes I might come here and add a little bit. I may have to come back and add a little green too. You never know. I'm going to add Gotta be partial careful. rose, maybe perhaps here in the water. So how the roses are happening, if you haven't done any of the bigger quests with me, is a little curve stroke, a little friend curve stroke, curving around. We kind of just tuck them around each other. We just tuck them around each other. It's the beginning. You remember the, uh, hmm. you did a really pretty painting of a, uh, was that like a the hammock over the over the water? Oh yeah, and it looked like uh, blood in the water. Yeah, I'm gonna try to avoid that. <laughs> Just the drippy, you know, it's hard. Drippy to blood in the water? No, no, no more of that. Oh. Put a little bit there, and you know these are back roses, so we're just getting them in. Shh. We're just getting them in. Shortcake, come on, shortcake. We're just getting in some roses. Nobody's hugging. This dog is convinced when anybody's hugging that something bad is going on, oh, no, or she she's being left out. I'm not really sure what she's. She's thinking. bored. Oh. You bored? She's asking you to do something with her? Well, she came over and threw the... At me. <laughs> Hear it. Just coming here and enjoying that. Maybe I'll come in and... Uh, let's take... While this is having a little bit of a minute, I'm going to take my pink a bit. We're going to try not to make it look like blood and water and just add just a little bit of pink. At least where the roses are. See, I'm coming along the water here and sort of blending them in while they're still wet. Uh, kind of helping them feel like water. Now, I'm going to go ahead and load up with some of my fresh white. Okay, if it's got some pink into it. We're going to kind of capture the tops of some of these petals. I'm working wet into wet. This this one I'm going to do the little circles facing sort of up. That's a complex load on your brush there. Or it seems yeah, it's to be. just white. It had just had a little pink on it. Oh. And then before these dry, I'll go ahead and just uh, it looks add that good. to the water a bit. And come underneath them and I'm blending them into the water so that they're in the water. I do have some pink on my brush, but I'm grabbing white. I'm going to come along these little flowers. I'm 
get a little more white. So I've got my hog brush. This is a number 12 hog brush. They are so talky. Nice shortcake. She has some feelings over here. She's she like, does. She would like you to stop doing what you're doing <laughs> and play. She's like, you over here are not doing anything. Clearly, come play with me. All you're doing is staring at that empty screen that has nothing going on, she says, and making the clacky clack noises that you like so much. So I'm just going around okay, each I'm of the roses, the just making little circles. She's actually getting to a point to be. Hmm? She's now getting disruptive. I'm about to put her in another room. <laughs> she's like pulling on your socks or something. No, she didn't. Sometimes I'll grab a little bit of the white, just even on my brush, if the roses have started to, you know, like dry. It's pretty okay at the moment. Let's dry that and we're going to come back and add some details. All right. Where are we going? I don't know. You got to put her away. Oh, okay. But we're, I said she was being so I can't do that if you're going to dry. Oh, I dry. Okay. Yeah, you dry. So I'm going to stay here and you dry. And I'll have that dog bite my feet. Man, this dog is. She is being all that little dog bits. She's over here sitting down and she bites my toes. And then when I try to brush her away, she bites my fingers. Not in the bad, like not, not in like in a big way, but like in the, you're gonna play with me. I'm not letting go of your hand and your toes. Ah, like right now, she's got that firm grip on my toe. Like you're gonna come play with me and just no, stop. Shh. All right, there we go. You're back. I'm back. Let's give From them a step. Space. Step. All right. Oh wait, no. I think that's the rinse, 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 rinse. Whoop. There we go. Okay. I'm going to come up and get a little of my white loaded onto my brush. Hopefully pretty well flowed. Still number four round. And I'm adding another little layer to it. Maybe pull some big petals back there. If I feel like it needs to be pinker, I can just easily get back into my pink. Sort of the third layer on this. Come along here and kind of smush this on the edge, right? I'm come back with that really cool. Everyone says this is just incredible. Little hog brush. Blend it. Mm, Twix. Doing detail work. <laughs> <laughs> They've all come. <laughs> <laughs> They're back. Oh, yeah. They can go anywhere. All the dogs have decided it's dog time. Told you. Get a little more weight if I need to. Just pull this in. And and another thing I'd like to do is I'd like to, while this is all here, and we're sort of seeing all of this reflected in the water, I'd like to get some of that green that we had. Just work that in there, so. That... And see it as well. And now I'm going to put out a little more white. Oh, uh, yes, I am. Yeah. You could 
I'm not sure if everybody mm-hmm. can hear the little dogs just Oh, growling. I can hear them. I know you can hear them. I don't know if everybody else can hear them, though. I absolutely hear them. I'm, 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 tr- I'm going to try to run them off in a second. I'm going to go ahead and get my little detail brush loaded up with some white. Thinned with water, loaded up with white. Thinned with water, loaded up with white. And go ahead and detail out some of the little edges of these roses. There. Less dog, dogs to bark and growl and do doggy things. Just come along the little water's edge. We're like, no. Capturing like just little highlights on the petals. It's just little highlights. Just giving them a little bit of something. Really makes it all pop though. Just wiggling this little brush, making sure there's like little water motions happening in the water as well. No, Twix, I cannot. I love <laughs> you so much. Oh, come here. You are just dying. She <sighs> is. You'd be here for a second. She's over there. Hmm? I'm sorry. No, you're fine. I don't know if Twix is in the way now. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to pick them up so you can finish, you know? Skills you learn being a mom. Twix is like, I have blocked the shot. Look at this. I'm right here. (laughs) No, you're fine. (laughs) But she did do it cutely. What'd she do? Block the shot. <laughs> oh, cutely blocked our shot? Yeah. I like that a little bit. There we go. Now, I've got my ocean color from before. Right, so I'm going to come back in. With a little more of it. Just making sure you know we've got nice little water effect running through here, just touching it up till I'm happy with it. A little bit of white and yellow ochre. You know, because we're just playing. Oh, there we go. Happy. Happy, happy. All right, that's me. Super nice. That's me today. That's you today. You might go further. You, you might gonna, spend longer with it. Yeah, put your put your moniker. Yeah, I'm gonna put my name on there. Your moniker. We can't leave you without that because this is so Sherpa. This is so Sherpa. This is how I paint this. This is very typical of cinnamon. 
Yeah, and what we do. I'm gonna this have is to what add she her to does. the goddesses playlist. Join the ladies. All right, now, if you're learning how to paint and you want to be able to paint like this, and you watch this because it just somehow caught your eye. I have a beginner's acrylic painting course if you've never painted before and you just don't know what anything of this is. And that's okay because we all start somewhere and that's why we have that course. I'm also going to be doing a bunch of one hoot, one, one, one hoot paintings for you guys for a minute. So for you newer guys that are having trouble doing these two and three hoot paintings, we're going to get you back in the painting groove. And that way by this Christmas, it's going to be snow. It's going to be Santa's face. It's going to be all the stuff that we like to do, winter scenes, cabins, fall scenes, all the fun stuff, right? So let's, this summer, we're going to just have some fun. Oh, look at that. Yeah, really turned out. Happy, happy. Art is fun. Art is just fun. Makes life better. Very simple stuff. Breathe deep. Breathe out. Pat yourself on the back because you did it. If you're here, you did it. And remember, when you watch, you learn because your mirror neurons go off. So even if you're not painting here yet, when you come and watch a complicated painting lesson like this, you're learning how it's done. Your brain is like, I get it. I see it. I understand it. So it helps you get better, too, even when you're not ready to paint it yet. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.